Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor. <laughs> <laughs> keeping that in, keep going. <laughs> We're keeping it? Oh yeah. Okay, and today we are doing our floral vase project. Wow. Oh, oh dang it. all right. So. That's okay, we're just gonna roll with it because that's what art is, rolling with it. And we're gonna be doing this project in five steps. So our very first step is we are going to lightly sketch our vase and put in our background. Our second step is we are gonna put in watercolor washes, which will serve as our flowers as also, and also some long thin leaves. Our third step is we will start doing bigger leaves. Our fourth step is we will be doing the pen and ink the pen and watercolor details on our florals and leaves. Our fifth step is we'll outline our base, add some splatters, do some more cool stuff. And number six, party. And number six, party. <laughs> um, I'm really, really excited for this project because I want you to go into this recognizing that with watercolor, you know, you, you have to be careful about timing and you gotta be precise and you're worried about this and you gotta be careful. And we're not worrying about that at all. We are letting it be. We are playing, we are exploring. I want you, all of those like crazy paintings that are like super active and messy and all of that kind of stuff, that is what we're going for. I want you to like let your creative freak flag fly, okay? You got some real chaotic energy about you right now. I know. I like it. <laughs> I'm like, let's create. <laughs> wow, <laughs> so good. But I think it's so good for us to let that freedom out sometimes instead of trying to like push it down, control it, layer it correctly. That's all good and well, but sometimes you just need to freaking go and Are you and trying to paint. say you need to let your freak flag fly? Yeah, I literally just said that. Did you? Yes! <laughs> Are you paying attention oh. at all? No, I was so excited to say it. My brain turned off. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was great. Okay, let's start. <laughs> I'm going to be using three paintbrushes for this. I have my round two, my round six, my round 12, but please use whatever brushes that you have. Um, I have four paint colors today. Let me get my scratch paper because I'm going to swatch them because they're new. And that way you guys can try and color match if you don't have these, but I highly suggest you get them because they're pretty awesome. Our first color here is blush, which is just the softest, most beautiful blush pink ever. Our second color here is golden yellow. Just a nice warm color, not orange, not green, not brown, gold. Last color here, or third color here is dusty rose, which kind of like, like look at these colors together. It's just so beautiful together. They're perfect. And then the last color here is indigo, which is just like such a great navy. I love a good navy color. I love a good dark blue that's not too saturated in blue. I like that it leans gray. Um, if only there was almost like this sea salt, kind of like turquoisey desaturated color. You'll just have to wait for next month for that one. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Spoiler alert number Spoiler two. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Okay. Let's do our oath and then we will get started. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're gonna sketch our vase first. Now, I just wanna say the wonderful thing about this project is it is customizable. We don't have an outline. You guys can do whatever you want. I'm gonna do a vertical or, uh, or portrait orientation, which means it's standing up. If you guys have like a vision in your mind of where you want this to go and you wanna put it on its side, that's totally fine. It would be the same thing. Um, but because mine is a portrait orientation, I'm gonna go with a long, kind of more skinny vase. If I was having it on its side, I would probably have it be a little bit wider and have it go this way instead of this way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and we are embracing the wonky and weird today. So don't worry if your vase is not even. Um, for my vase, I'm going to start, let's go, I don't know, maybe an inch or two. 
off the center. The only thing is you want to try and get it in your center, like in the center of your paper, your base. So usually I'll mark the center of my paper and then I know that my vase should have like even on each side. That feels even. And then I'm gonna do a curve up like so and a curve up like so. And then from here, after you put down some marks, you can adjust. So I actually want the bottom of my vase to be a little bit shorter. And if you want to erase your lines, you can. If you want to leave them, you can. This is the beautiful thing about painting. And ink and washes, we want it to be messy. Is that even? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that you can do is you can actually measure with your pencil. So let's say this is the end of my vase here. I would line up my pencil to the end and then to the tape, so it's that long. And then over here, I would see that it's not that at all. So let's move it. Oh man, that is so off. Also for you millionaires out there, a ruler <laughs> would also work and save you I, some time. I struggle with rulers, I don't like them. Okay, that feels better. I like try and come up with literally anything besides rulers to use. Like you can measure this with your tongue <laughs> if you do it in three separate. Okay. That feels better. That feels better, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll notice that I'm doing soft curves on, on all of these pieces. I'm not doing straight lines because the vase, usually how things like sitting next to us that are three dimensional, even if they have like sides like this, they're still in a three dimensional space and they kind of like curve, like look at this jar that has a curve to it. You know what I mean? Look at the bottom. If it was straight on the table and we were looking at it from its side, it would have a, a straight bottom. But because we're looking at it at an angle, we have to take into the three dimensionality of the actual vase, which is most likely gonna be round. So that's why it's curved. Okay. 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 That was more painful than it needed to be. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Now we are going to do our background and this is where I want you guys to play with colors. I'm going to start with some neutrals, but remember this is your painting. We're letting our freak flag fly. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to try to match As that energy. As Michael said, <laughs> what a great idea, it. dear. <laughs> and um, I'm going to start by mixing indigo and blush for a neutral because together they can make this really gorgeous gray and you just so you know you'll probably be using quite a bit of blush in this project just because it's such a light value and it's such a soft color that you have to use a bit more of it for it to show okay oh I like that gray color and then I'm just like being very messy with this. I'm doing, I'm gonna do some in the top left, kind of vertical strokes, maybe some that are a little bit like dry. It's not about an even wash, it's just about putting some textures in. And what we're trying to do is activate the spaces where there's not gonna be flowers. I know that the majority of the activity is gonna be here, but I don't want everything else to kind of fall off. So I need to activate those spaces by putting color and texture there, like what we're doing right now. That's why we're doing this. So we can put some like, I don't want it to feel like a table. I'm just doing more like horizontal, just to like put something there, but it's not like I'm painting a table, okay? And then let's paint our vase itself. We can go for a little bit stronger color if you want. Again, this is like rough. While it's wet, I love to do some splatters. Cause that's just gonna create some textures. I also really like water splatters because instead of having a dark color on top, it's actually going to make the color move and have white hmm. dots. 
So it's just cool. It's just really cool. Okay, and let's grab some golden yellow and just be like, okay, let's bring some yellow into this so it's not just all like the tan or the gray, sorry. It's like, look at that guy. That's cool. That was from doing water drops. Super cool. So again, we're working in light values. We're just kind of being loose and rough and playing. What if you like got your brush wet and just like sprayed water? <laughs> See, I could be funny. See, that one is on purpose. <laughs> I couldn't tell if it was on purpose at first. And I'm like, how do I nicely say <laughs> that's what I just did? Michael. <laughs> okay. I'm going to... Like, I did some washes here, but they kind of all evened out except for this guy, which is not bad, but part of me just wants to, like, mess that up, too. So, whoop, bump, bump, bump. Well, I'm using my one-inch wash. You don't have to. You can use whatever brush you want. Not a liner. Don't use a liner. Am I making that up? Why can't you use a liner? I feel like it would take 10 years. Well, yeah. Yeah. It would. Okay. That's it. And can we just pause and say, there's something so lovely about a subtle texture in like grays and neutrals. I just love it. And it's, it works so good for backgrounds. It's just a great way to mess up your paper because sometimes when your paper is pristine and white, you're scared. You're just like, I'm afraid to be freaky. You know what I mean? Like I'm afraid to make crazy marks and do all this because the paper is so pretty. And sometimes we want to preserve that prettiness, but other times if you just mess up your paper first, then like it's already kind of messy. So there's nothing to mess up. Let's dry it before we move on to step two. Now we are going to do some organic shapes and organic shapes are just curvy shapes. There's not straight lines, they're just curved. That's what I mean by organic shapes. So we're gonna do organic shapes using our pinks um, to create the washes for our flowers. So I'm gonna start with, we can start with like four. And the first one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my round 12 and you can start with just water if you want. So I'm just kind of doing a round shape. Now you'll notice that it's not a perfect oval. It's like, I let there be like a waviness to it, okay? And then while it's still wet, I'm gonna take the blush a good amount and just drop it in the middle. Do you worry about bubbles ever? I see there's a bubble on there. Yeah, sometimes you'll get bubbles on there. Let's see what that does. I never worry when that happens. Okay. And let's do the same thing, but with our dusty rose. So I'm gonna go like up and to the left. Now, the only thing you wanna be careful of when you're doing these organic floral shapes is we usually don't want to create um, like strong lines where like the flowers are right next to each other or right on top of each other. We usually always want them to be staggered. And let's say, let's say one's like turning away from us a little bit. So it's going to be more of a, an organic shape, but more like a kidney bean. The elusive kidney bean flower. That's right. And drop in and then in the center, like top center. And this is what I love about watercolor is like you do a rounded shape, you drop in a dark center and people know that those are flowers. Like we haven't done anything yet, but if I had to like just take this and walk around and say, what do you think this is? People will see the vase and they'll see the flowers. And that's a beautiful thing. I well, I hope so. I see the Hydra. The Hydra? Yeah, the three-headed monster in Hercules. Oh. <laughs> And it's okay if these flowers touch or run into each other. Remember, this is like loose. The other thing is you'll notice that my flower came into my vase a little bit too. Like it, here's the top and my flower comes in. And that is also true to how we would see flowers in a vase. You know, sometimes they hang out and over. So then it looks like it's in front. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. And then let's mix some indigo and golden yellow to get a really brown green. And we're gonna do some like long skinny leaves. 
So I'm gonna do one kind of coming out this way, just in a single stroke. And I'm gonna do one coming out this way. So whenever I'm doing florals like this, you wanna try and keep balance. And how I try and keep balance is I usually like, whatever I do on a top, I usually look to see if I can do it on the bottom. If I do something on the left, where can I do it on the right? And so then I'm kind of going up across, you know, this way and this way the whole time. And that makes it easier for us to keep overall balance within our composition. Because if we only focus on the top, then it's gonna feel really heavy on the top and then the bottom is just gonna kind of like disappear on us. So moving around all the edges of your flowers and thinking, okay, I put something here, let's put something on the opposite side is, a, is an easy way to like stay on top of it. It's not a perfect way, but it's, you most likely will have a more balanced composition with florals like this if you do that. Okay, so that's looking good. And my, my blush kind of like bled out and I will, I don't know, I'm gonna try one more time to have a darker center. Just on that one. It doesn't have to be on every one, um, but it just felt, feels like it needs that. Okay, now we're gonna move on to step three. And this is where, gonna, where we're going to start putting in like our bigger leaves and our other foliage, okay? So I'm gonna switch to my six. And let's start with just indigo. And I'm gonna do a leaf here. And then how I like to get a finer line, no matter what brush I'm using, is I already have paint on my brush. I'm just gonna smush the bristles, flip it, smush the bristles, and now my tip is pinched. So then when I go to do a line, it's much easier to get a thin line. And that works for a round two, a round six, like whatever brushes you're using. If you wanna try doing a single stroke leaf, you can. And how you do that is you start with light pressure, push down, and then light pressure. Cool. Or if you want to um, just kind of shape it, like draw it, and then fill it in, you can do that too. So do whatever is easier for you. If you get some bleedings where it touched, that's okay. We're okay with that. I'm going to do, I want to make sure this is dry. I'm going to do a blue over here. I usually like to start with my top leaf first like the one that's furthest away. So then I can control how far out it goes from the center. Sometimes if you start with a stem and then just keep adding leaves, for me at least I get lost where I'm like, let's just keep going. And then all of a sudden my leaf is like, this stem is like this long. So if I start with my top leaf, then I know that's where it ends and then I work back from there. On camera, the background color looks almost identical to concrete. It does, yeah. That's a really nice color. Okay, so now I put that up here. I did one across, now I'm looking down here. Where can I put one down here? I'm gonna do one right. Now remember, we don't have an outline for this, so everybody's is gonna look different. Already I'm going off script from what I did on my reference photo, and that is totally okay. Now let's take that green, and it's really a brown green. This brown green, and we'll do a nice big leaf here. And whenever I do nice big leaves, they're my favorite because then I can do things like this. And just drop in more yellow, more blue. Oh, it looks so pretty. Look at how pretty that is. So pretty. Okay, now this is a great example. For me, I just put such a dark value down really large on my painting. So if you're looking at this, your eye is gonna go directly there because there's nothing else within this painting that is the same value as this. This is very clearly my darkest value. So for me, as I'm painting, I need to think about how I can bring in this dark value in other places of my composition so then it makes my eye move. Now that's gonna be a little bit easier because we have pens, 
So outlining things and um, adding detail lines will bring a really dark value in, but I have to keep this in mind. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. So right now I can do a dark leaf over here, but I'm gonna wait a second and see how this dries before I commit to that because watercolor always dries lighter than when it's wet. So like I noticed it, I acknowledge that, whoa, that's so dark on my painting. I might have to put that somewhere else in here, but I'm gonna see how everything else plays out before I commit to that, okay? Makes sense. And the reason why I can wait is because dark values, you can paint on top of anything. Like those can be at the end because they're so dark, they can go over things, okay? Now let's do some, you can use just golden yellow and do some like longer, skinnier leaves, like maybe like this. Actually, let's switch to my two because that's gonna make it more delicate. You see how thick my line is here? I want something a little bit more, yeah. And if you can switch up the shapes of your leaves. Like right now I have three different, four different leaf shapes going. That is going to make my painting feel nice and full and visually interesting because it's not the same shape over and over again. Some are long and swoopy, some are thick and more round and dark. And that adds visual interest to where I'm like, oh, 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 new texture, new line, new movement, you know? The other thing that I try and do is I try not to have any of my elements go straight up and down or straight to the sides. There's always a curve in there, a soft movement, because if you think about plants and you think about a stem, unless it's extremely rigid, most of the time they droop a little bit. You know what I mean? And so like, not only is that more true to what we're seeing, but compositionally, it makes it feel a little bit softer, where if I had really harsh straight geometric lines going up and down, that's going to um, mess with my composition and create implied lines. If I were to do a really just straight up and down leaf right here, like that would, your I would immediately go, whoa, what's going on here, you know? So I always like to leave a little droop to it. And... That feels pretty good. Now what we are going to do, and this is super, super fun, is we have tools to start filling in our composition. So we have a pen. After this dries, we'll start doing details on our flowers, and then we'll also draw parts of um, different flowers and leaves and shapes within here. You can use the pen itself to balance out your composition, and that actually makes it easier because for example, let's say like maybe right here, like, oh, I don't have space to do a whole nother color or leaf right here, but I really need to activate this space. Well, you can draw something there. And then that way it activates it without it having to like get muddy with the other colors that are already there. So I'm gonna take my heated craft tool and just make sure this is dry. And one thing I'm going to do, like let's say you have a puddle on your paper and you're like, this is taking forever to dry. If you don't care about it lightening up, just soak up the paint using a paper towel. Nice. And then you're like, done. Okay, so I'm going to draw some flowers and I'm going to be using both my round two and paint and my pen. Um, when it comes to, and can they see, let's go to the close-up cam. Okay. I'm gonna put this here. So when I'm doing this big flower right here, I'm gonna start with my center, which is just a circle. And then when I do my petals, they always start narrow. See how little, it's like this little triangle right here. And then I'm gonna have them wave out. And I'm just gonna do that kind of petal shape all the way around. And you'll notice that I'm letting my petals be wavy. This one maybe got a little too wavy, but that's okay. And then in between the sections of flowers, I'm gonna do the tops of other petals. Okay. Cool. 
And this might not seem like a lot, but when you do things, like let's add some dots for the center and then detail lines coming out of the petals. And this is, you can also use these detail lines to reshape it. Like let's say I didn't start very na narrow with that petal, so then I can reshape it. If you want to go and do the continuous line florals like we did in our um, Go With The Flow, like do that too. There's so many options here and really, I really want you to try them all. So before when that flower just kind of looked like a blob, now I'm like, oh, okay, I see some shape here. That looks more like a flower. Now for this guy right here, this actually kind of reminds me of a succulent. Um, this one right here and, or it, maybe it's kind of like a rose. So how I do that is the biggest thing is you want to remember that when you're working with a rose shape, the petals get larger as they work their way out and you want to make sure it's staggered. So I start with the center, which is usually like, I don't know, a teardrop drop shape almost. And then I just kind of go from there. And then now I have two pieces to work off each other. So I'm going to do that. And then like, you basically just want to keep staggering and making the petals longer as you work your way around. They're like spiral. It's almost, yeah, it is kind of like a spiral. So let's, let's see what that's like. Let's say we start with a spiral and then that could, that could kind of work if you need to do a spiral shape to help you. The biggest thing is I don't have it, like this next petal, I wouldn't start here in between these two. I would have it go, the middle go in between the two. Does that make sense? Yeah, it bridges them. Yeah. And notice that some kind of poke out, some are more flat, but they're not all solid. I'm not doing this. Okay. You see that? That might be cool. That probably would be really cool. And then you can make it as big as you want it to. Like you, you would just keep on going and they would just keep on getting longer and bigger. And soon they would cover the whole earth. And then it would just keep going and go. No, I'm just kidding. But this is how we create that feeling of layers of petals. And if you want to do like a spiral and pencil first and then kind of draw around it, you can. If you want to do your sketches in pencil first before you commit to pen, you can. I don't know if you'll be able to erase them, but there's that. And then if we're doing our leaf shape, we would do the same kind of shape here. I like to start with my leaf and notice that there it's narrow at the top and the bottom and then it's big in the belly. So you almost do like a curved line and then the opposite curved line, okay? We call them Michael leaves, the big belly ones. Big bellies. And then you do your thin stem here and you do another one. And then I like to do a vein and then you can do kind of lines, detail lines kind of coming out. And this is gonna create a feeling of um, depth. And this is the fun part too, is as you're doing these flowers and leaves, you don't have to try and mimic exact flowers and leaves. You can make up shapes. You can do leaves that are curved like this, like more illustration. Let me bring that down. Like that, you can do, you can do wonky flowers where maybe it's like a, Taco, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is what I mean by like, let yourself play. What marks can you make within this? Can you like, how cool is it that we can go from something maybe more like this to this, to this, to this? Like there is room for all of that here. And so whatever marks excite you that when you see it, you're like, oh yeah, I really wanna try that. Try it, do it. Okay, so I have my sepia micron and I'm just gonna start. 
So let's do a circle here and then we'll do a petal. And I usually try and get five petals in. And then I just let it go. And notice that it's okay. I'm not following the shape of the watercolor wash exactly. Then we're gonna do our detail lines. And if you wanna like do all the shapes first and then do detail lines like kind of all together at the end, you can, or you can take it one by one, whatever is easier for you. Now for those who have done, I have a, a Magnolia ebook tutorial where I really focus on creating leaves and the shapes of flowers. It's a little bit more intermediate but if you guys have taken that, then like use what I talked about of doing detail lines in the petals here, kind of following the shape. Okay, so there's a flower. Let's do a succulent one, kind of down here, succulent rose. So again, and it doesn't matter what shape you start with in the middle, it just needs to be like small. and then just let them stagger and get longer and bigger as you make your way out. And then let's say that you do accidentally like end in the middle, that's fine. Just keep going and just be like, oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that. I feel like your brand will just gloss over that once you get enough petals on it. Yeah, exactly. And notice that I'm not like, oh, I need to think about this. I'm just going. Like, we are making decisions quickly here. And when you force yourself to make decisions quickly, it's it's really good. It's just good. <laughs> it's just good for you. Okay, so I feel really good about those two. Those are really fun. Um, I'm going to do switch my round two. And using my dusty rose here, I'm going to do kind of like that round dahlia, like kind of like a dahlia flower, which is just curved lines. And I'm gonna start in the middle and then you just kind of like stagger them working your way out. And if you need to darken it a little bit, you can add some indigo. That will give it kind of like a purpley color, which is kind of cool, I think. So go with what feels good. And I'm just gonna keep doing this shape all the way around. Now these ones, you can let them get a little bit bigger as you work your way out, but not like this. You don't want these to be like huge at the end. They, they more or less stay a very similar size. And if you're looking at this and you're like, I don't like that flower, I'm gonna do another mark in there. Please do. This is definitely one where I'm like, Make your own dreams come true, you know what I mean? Like, follow that voice inside you that's saying, try this, do this, set Sarah chocolate. <laughs> oh, is that fun? Yeah, that's awesome. And then if you want to, like, let's say, oh, I liked this wash, but it kind of was a little bit more flat than I wanted it to be. Like, there is nothing stopping you from doing another layer at all. Like, do whatever you want. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to take my yellow. Let's paint the center here, just right on top of the pink. Um, this one is kind of towards its side. And so I'm like, how do I paint this shape on its side over here? And so I kind of just made it up. I don't know if it's accurate, but I basically just like did all of the curves on its side. Does it have a yellow center? This flower does. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you can make up flowers. You can make up whatever you want. I always think that these kinds of projects are so good for our creativity because I notice within myself, 
And I'm not gonna say this to like complain, but sometimes after I'm done filming projects, I kind of like teaching, I kind of just like slump because I'm like, I'm tired. Teaching is, it's, it's, um, takes a lot of energy. But whenever I teach ink and wash projects like this, I always feel invigorated after. I always am like, what's next? What are we doing? Like, and when you guys are painting and creating, I want you to notice that feeling within yourself. What projects invigorate you? And sometimes like we're just in the mood to paint. So no matter what, we feel invigorated. And then sometimes it's like, okay, so I've learned that when I'm maybe playing around and being silly, I feel energized. Or maybe I really like the um, repeating shapes and pattern. You know what I mean? Like Maybe you love painting rainbow unicorns. Maybe you love painting rainbow unicorns. We have unicorns. a project for you. We do. So like, I don't know. I think it's just good to recognize what is calling to you, you know? What makes you feel energized? And it won't always be the same every single time, but sometimes something just clicks. And I love showing you guys things like this. And I'm going to mess up some of this just because it felt like I needed to. There we go. That feels better. Okay. Now I can go back to my pen and I can do detail lines on some of these leaves. And I'm going to go fairly quick here because I don't want to spend so much time analyzing everything that I'm doing. Instead, I'm just going to say, let's go for it. Let's do it. And then the other nice thing too, like let's say I really like this shape, but I'm not sure if I can put it anywhere else. You can do it in a pen. And so it's going to speak to this, but it's not going to bring as much attention to it. So you can do that with any of the shapes or anything that we have been doing. I will say that this feels like I need to put another flower right here. Do you see that? Yep. Like this space just feels a little bit loose. And so I'm going to do a blush. I'm going to do it smaller. And I think I'm going to recreate this guy. So I'm just going to drop in some color. And I'm going to let that be. And then let's do, we can do detail, smaller leaves. It's always a good idea to have big, medium, and small pieces of leaves or flowers. Like, it's good to have those different sizes going on. Okay, and then I feel like I need something kind of coming out here. I'm trying to think of if I want it to go up, if I want it to go down. Up. No. Down. Down. <laughs> but I'm gonna give that a second. Sometimes if I don't know, I'll just move to another area and start filling out things somewhere else. And sometimes that helps me figure out what to do over there. This is where we can get like playful and funky. And now I'm thinking, how does my, how does it feel overall? Take a step back and say, and try and come to it with fresh eyes and think, is there a part that's feeling like it's leaning a certain way? Um, I feel like I need to have something more over here. Do you feel that a little bit? I kind of want something up in the top left to balance out that big heavy leaf. Oh yeah, our dark leaf. Yeah. Okay, so let's actually fill this guy in with that dark value. I don't, I don't want to do like a big fat leaf and cover anything up, but I drew that long skinny one. Yes, that's it. Yeah, that feels better. And then I'm actually going to have this kind of leaf poking down. Let's have it just kind of go out.
Okay, that feels better to me too. And now I feel like I need some detail lines over here. And you can even go over some painted as well. Like there's no rules here. You can do it all. I do feel like I need some color coming out down here. Let's do yellow. And then let's say like, okay, I put that down. I actually don't love that this and this is the same angle. So I'm just going to immediately lighten it and erase that leaf and do it again. So I just took some paper towel. I lifted up the excess color. I'm taking some mostly clean water. I'm blending this out. I'm gonna lift. I'm gonna let that dry. And then I'm gonna do a leaf going more down instead of going out. But if you like make decisions that quickly, you can essentially move things around your painting. Okay, this is still wet. I wanna add a little something here, but that's still wet that I'm not gonna to touch it. Let's actually dry, cause I need to do that top. So you can outline this big leaf if you wanna add like a little bit of, what's that word? Serrated edge. Toothy. Toothy. This is dry. So um, when you have like a half flower like this peeking out, you don't need to find the center of the half flower. Essentially, we would try and pretend like there's no other elements. And so let's say the flower is round like this shape, then I would start my center like here where the center is. And then just go from there. And sometimes you might have a petal that just like is really big. That's okay. That happens too. And then when I get to these elements, I would just stop drawing and just keep going over here as if I didn't stop. Cool. Cool. I like this better than your example one. Yeah? Yeah. Thanks. And this is what is so great about this project is like you can easily turn this into a card. Like this same process works great for any size paper that you have in front of you. Um, you would just adjust the shape to fit that paper. That's it. Okay. I feel really good about my elements. I'm going to do that long. Let's actually do blue. I did yellow at first, but I want blue. So I'm going to grab more clean indigo. I'm going to do long skinny. There we go, that feels good. I feel like I need to have something out here. We'll just do kind of roundish leaves. And if you need, like if you're like, I really love this dusty pink, you can do like buds coming out. And you can just paint over the drawing part. It's so great. You can shape them, you can leave them wet. Okay. Fun fact, because I was just curious and looked. Indigo comes from ground up indigo leaves. They're that color. This plant is that color. They just grind them up. Really? Isn't that nuts? That is nuts. Okay, so now we're on our very last step. We are going to outline our vase. And if you want to do little like designs on the bottom of your vase, you can. And remember, like, you can reshape your vase. You don't have to follow the wash exactly. But you can have a lot of fun just on the vase itself. And let's do some splatters. Because I'm a splatter gal. If you're not, that's okay. I'm doing pink. Do some water. The nice thing about water ones is you can't see what they do until they're dry. And I actually think that's pretty cool. It's a little surprise to yourself. Little, a little gift to yourself. And I want a little bit bigger ones. So I'm gonna take gold and lots of water and you do kind of a stabbing motion. A 
impressive. Thank you. And you can smear him. Smear. Do whatever you want. And it's done. Beautiful. Isn't she so fun? Yeah. Oh, I just love her so much. Um, and you can do this with any color palette. If there are some colors that you're just like, oh, I really like the look of these colors together. Do that. Play with it. Explore. Try new things. Um, practice your mark making. Practice your drawing. This is... This type of project is an excellent way for you to round out your skill set. It's a, always a good idea to um, push ourselves in the places that make us feel uncomfortable because that's when we grow. It's hard to do it because it's uncomfortable. We're like, ooh, I don't like drawing. But the more that we familiarize ourselves with it and try and maybe even fail and then we try again, that's how we improve. So, um, Go for the thing that makes you uncomfortable. Do the dark marks and the heavy washes and the funky splatters. Draw and play and just see where it takes you. And if you decide that it's not for you, that's okay. But you'll never know unless you try. Um, if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Michael, always a pleasure. Anytime. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.